A quick note before we get started, this video has been posted before, but there were some crazy glitches and the video would stop playing while the audio kept going on. If this happens, please make sure that you are viewing this video at 720p or higher since that was one of the ways of fixing it. Please let me know as well if it's still happening or if there are no problems this time. Okay, I love you, bye! Hello friends, it's Kat from Meow Meow Kapow. Sennelier watercolors are one of my favorites because of how well they layer and because I swear there's a glow that comes from inside the paint, probably because of how ultra transparent their colors are. The problem is their paints are really expensive where I live and there's only one store nearby that sells even the most inexpensive colors at about $15 a tube. This Sennelier watercolor test pack is an incredible value because you get five 10 milliliter tubes in the box for about 17 bucks. The five colors included are bright red, lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, Chinese orange, and Payne's gray. Plus, I'd be lying if I didn't say that part of the value for me was in the tin itself because now I have a place specifically to store all of my Sennelier tubes. Today, I'm going to use these five colors to show you how I make the simplest and most basic watercolor travel palette. These are great because if you consider decorating your palette to be an optional step, this will only take you about an hour to assemble. And that's only because I'm extra careful with labeling and making sure that everything is secure. Like all of my palettes, I start off by writing down the brand and color name on a piece of tape. Trust me, if you manage to accidentally throw all of your paint on the floor one day, you'll be super grateful for having taken this step. I know I was. Because I usually use metal tins to create my travel palettes, my preferred method of securing them inside is with magnetic tape. This magnetic tape I'm trying today is new to me and it's the thinnest I've ever seen. The dispenser has a little cutting edge like a roll of scotch tape might have, but it doesn't seem very useful for actually cutting the tape in small pieces. That being said, the magnet itself is surprisingly strong and it did not budge when I tested it out by shaking it around a bunch. It'll work fine. I think in the future I'll just stick to using scissors to cut it though. For this palette, we're going to use five half pans for our five colors. Links to all the materials used in this video are down in the doobly-doo, by the way. Before we put any paint inside our pans, always label them with your little name tapes first. I use tape that I've written on rather than writing directly on the pan itself in case I decide later on down the line to reuse the pans for a completely different color. That way, all you have to do is remove the old tape and put on a new piece with a new label. Easy peasy. Also, before you put the paint in the pans, make sure you know what arrangement you want them in. I got this cute little flowery tin on Amazon, but it turns out that I couldn't get all five of my half pans to fit inside, no matter what arrangement I tried. Luckily, I know for a fact that you can get five, sometimes even six half pans into a mini Altoids tin, and I always have a couple on hand. Once your labeled, magneted pans are arranged inside your tin, fill them up with paint. You can, of course, fill the pans with paint and put them in afterwards, but I find it's easier for me to fill them while they're already inside the tin because that way I don't get wet paint all over my fingers while trying to place them inside the tin. And I don't have to wait a night or longer for them to dry enough that I don't have to worry about that. It's just easier to start with them already in place. By the way, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel and giving this video a thumbs up. It honestly does help out and I really truly appreciate it. I know I'm not the only one who thinks freshly poured paint looks like delicious candies. Ugh, so pretty. If you don't care about decorating your tin, congratulations, you're done. However, I like to decorate mine so I can easily tell which one is which, either from looking at it or touching it. And yes, I have done a whole swatch chart for these five colors, but we'll talk about that in another video. On a daily basis, I carry two or three of these mini tins in my pocket and having a way to tell them apart without having to take them all out is really handy. Also, there are plenty of additional adjustments you can make to these tins, but I'm just gonna go for the most simple and easiest to create so we can get to using them quickly. Just like in my larger studio travel palette, I like to start with washi tape as the base for decoration. For Sennelier paints in particular, I personally prefer to use flowery designs. They sort of feel French to me, though I couldn't tell you why. 
After all the tape is laid down on top and the excess is cut off with scissors or an X-Acto knife, I like to put a small thin band of tape around the short edge to make it look a little bit cleaner. Then take some glue like this tacky glue that I'm using or Elmer's glue or PVA or Mod Podge or whatever you have that dries clear and coat the tape in this glue. Be extra careful to get every single part of the tape because the glue will help keep it all in place. To help me be able to feel which palette is which in my pocket, I like to choose stickers that have some puff or texture to them. Today I'm using some cute kitty cats and a heart. No rhyme or reason to it, I just like these stickers. I like to put them on while the glue is still wet to help them stick a little bit better. Once the glue is completely dry, coat the whole palette in clear nail polish. The glue we used is not waterproof, so it will become sticky again if it happens to get wet, which is a common occurrence considering this is for a watercolor palette. The clear nail polish will seal the glue in and is waterproof. I also like it because it feels like having an extra layer on the palette really helps the whole thing stay together. After that's dry, enjoy your new palette, you're done! Here are the three main mini palettes that I use and because each of them looks different and has a different texture on the lid, it's very easy for me to super quickly tell which one is which. What do you think? Is this something you'd like to try out? You can use this method for all sorts of containers and it's a great basic way of starting to make your own palettes. If you want, I'd love to see your travel palettes. Tag me on Instagram if you make your own. Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and wonder.